Okay, so today we're going to talk about equivalent fractions. And let's just go over what the definition of a fraction is. So it's a number of the form A divided by B. So any number A over B. But here's the clue. B cannot equal zero. Why? Because you cannot divide by zero. And just as a reminder, we know that this is your numerator and this is your denominator down for denominator. Now, we talk about fractions being equivalent. And what that means is they're fractions representing the same value. So they have the same value. What's different, though, is the way that they look. So if I have our common fraction of 1 half, an equivalent fraction to that is going to be, if I was to multiply both the top and the bottom by 2, would be 2 fourths. I could also make 1 half. Another equivalent fraction could be 5 over 10. We could have an infinite number of fractions that are equivalent to 1 half, but we got better things to do. So equivalent fractions, they're equivalent. They look but they look different, have the same value. If I was to do a fraction as a division um, and change this to a decimal, it'd be 0 0.5. Same with this, it would be 0 0.5. Okay. Now, we have to make equivalent fractions. Now, how you're going to do that is you're either going to multiply or divide the numerator, which is the top number, and the denominator of a fraction by the same number. And some students in the past have called this the magic one. Okay, the magic one. Danica calls it the copycat. Okay, so let's take a look at how I would change this to an equivalent fraction. Now, if I could pick any number possible, I'm going to pick an easy one. I can't pick one because that would just be the same thing. So I'm going to pick the copycat of 2. So it's going to be 2 over 2. So 1 times 2 and 6 times 2. Okay. So again, I'm multiplying this value is 1. And that's why I'm not changing the value of the fraction. I'm just changing the way it looks. So here we go. 1 times 2 is 2. 6 times 2 is 12. So I just made an equivalent fraction. Again, if they ask you, which in some of the problems in the homework or in the book work, to make equivalent fractions of 1 6, choose simple numbers. Choose 2, 3, 4. If you want to pick 202, go right ahead, but that's just more work for you, and we want to keep things as simple as possible. Okay. Now, I'm going to show this one here by dividing. Um, you could, again, multiply by 2 um, to get an equivalent, but I'm going to go ahead and just divide because what I know about these two numbers is that they're even. So I know I can divide both the top and the bottom by 2 because they're even. Okay. So the, again, this is that magic 1, that copycat. So 6 divided by 2 is going to be 3. 8 divided by 2 is going to be 4. Okay. So these would be equivalent fractions, meaning that they have the same value, they just look a little different. There's nothing else I could factor out from here. Um, this is what we would call the simplest form. So here we go, simplest form. A fraction is in simplest form if the greatest common factor, and again, if you want to just write GCF, you can, of the numerator and denominator is 1. So if all factors have been divided out and there's nothing else in common, then I'm done. So a couple of different ways you could do this. You could write out your prime factorization for each, okay? Or you could just kind of say, hmm, these are both ending in 5. So I know I can divide by 5, okay? And I'm going to divide the bottom by 5. Okay, again, this is that copycat. It's that it's really 1 because 5 divided by 5 is 1. So I'm not changing the value of it. I'm just changing the way it looks. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. 
15 divided by 5 is 3. Now, all of the factors have been taken out, and the greatest common factor between both of these, since they're both prime, is going to be 1. Or actually, 1's not neither prime nor composite. Okay, so let's simplify this into the simplest form. So I'm going to look for a copycat that I can take out from the top and the bottom. And I know, again, they're even, so I can divide by 2. So I'm going to divide the top by 2, and I'm going to divide the bottom by 2. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Okay. Now, I still have something that's in common. And so, again, they're both even, so I know I can divide out by 2 again. So I'm going to divide the top by 2. Divide the bottom by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Now, when I look at these numbers, there's no other factor other than 1 that's in common. So I am in what we would call our simplest form. There's nothing else that could be factored out. All right, so here are some examples or some problems to work on. And... I'll have you work with your group person next to you. So again, simplest form, I'm going to go ahead and just divide out the top and the bottom. By I'll just do 2 again. Six or 12 divided by 2 is 6. Oh, this is the same one. Okay, and I'll divide it by 2 again, which would be 3 fourths. I didn't know I did that. Anywho, let's look at this next one. 7 and 28. What common factors do I have? So this is where you need to know your multiplication facts. So 28 is a, 7 is a factor of 28. So I'm going to divide out from the top and the bottom. I'm going to use my copycat of 7 over 7, which is really a magic 1. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 28 divided by 7 is 4. So my simplest form is one-fourth. All right, so let's take a look at this. What I automatically know in, is in common is fives because it ends in a five. If it ended in a zero, I know fives would work as well. So I'm going to use my copycat of five over five. Okay, And I'm just writing this extra division there so you kind of remind yourself that you're dividing both the numerator and the denominator. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 35 divided by 5 is 7. Right? Now, these are both prime numbers, and there's nothing that's in common between them. So this is our simplest form. And then we go to this one. Oh, what do I know about these? They're even numbers, so I'm going to go ahead and start off with 2. Again, I'm just putting this extra little division here. So you remember what we're doing. So 14 divided by 7, or sorry, 14 divided by 2 is 7. 34 divided by 2. So I'm going to use that distributive property and to help myself out. So I know 30 can be divided into by 2 by to 15. And then 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 15 plus 2 is 17. And since these are both prime numbers, I know that there's nothing else in common. So we are done. So let's just look back. We've made equivalent fractions. We've made simplest fractions. The next thing we're going to do is how to tell if two fractions, if I just gave you two fractions randomly, how can you tell me that they are equivalent? And I'm going to show you a really easy way to do that. First, you could simplify the fractions to the simplest form. If they're the same simplest form, then obviously they're equivalent. But if not, then you can use what we call, so you're going to either simplify or use cross products. And I'll remind you what those are. So first thing I'm going to do is simplify, just to see if it's the same simplest form. So. 6 and 10. I know that this fraction has 2 in common. So out to the side, I'm going to use my copycat of 2. 
Okay. And again, I'm just putting this extra little division here so you know what we're doing. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 10 divided by 2 is 5. This is in simplest form for this particular fraction. So then I'm going to take this other fraction, 9 fifteenths. And I know that 3, because I remember my multiplication, is a factor. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So these are both the same. So the fractions are equivalent. Hopefully you can just look at how I spelled that. Could have wrote that a little bit better. Now, this next one right here is kind of interesting. They're already in the simplest form. So really, and if you just think about it, you kind of know that they're not equivalent. But let's just check. So here's what we mean by cross products. So I'm going to write these fractions and I'm going to set them equal to each other. Okay, this is what I'm trying to find out. Does this fraction equal this fraction? So cross products, what I like to say is your cross up. So you go cross up here. So 5 times 2 is 10. And then you go cross up from here. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 does not equal 10, so they're not equivalent. And I think you guys are going to do great with this lesson. Again, most important thing that you need to know is your multiplication facts. All right, we'll work on this in class.